Yeah, this is the moment where they bring the boring banker on uh, the stage, so you're not very lucky, uh, uh, I must say. Uh, because the most inspiring for me today was, uh, were Faiza and uh, Kisha. Um, and it has also to do with the fact that my mother is Indonesian. And in the eyes of my mother, she still calls me a child. My wife also calls me a child every now and then, but it's a completely different uh, topic. Um, and as a grown-up child or a wannabe millennial, I have a personal interest also in this topic. And I, but and I'm not here to share this personal interest with you, I'm here to share my passion about it. Because the situation is, I think, very clear. We can talk all these management buzzwords about business case and license to operate, but it's, it, it's, it's just a moral case. Doing this is the right thing to do. That's why we do it. But the challenge is, especially in banking, for us, it's in our indirect footprint. It's in the footprint of our customers. So how do we get a better understanding of it? And the question is, how can we create impact? And the answer to that is quite simple. In order to create impact, we need to understand, we need to engage, and we need to collaborate. The first thing is we need to understand, in a world which is becoming more and more complex, clients are becoming more complex, operating globally, and we have less time to do so. We're living in a world which is extremely digitized, so our clients expect answers very quickly. That's the reason why we organize ourselves in sectors, and we also have our policies in sectors to get this better understanding. So understanding is very important. The second element is engage. We need to engage with clients. We, start, we need to start this conversation. That is why we partner with, uh, for instance, UNICEF to share the uh, children's rights business principles with our clients to start that conversation. But it's not only about talking, it's also putting your words into action. And I will give you an example. We were involved in a project in Africa where we were financing a, a project and we saw that there were a lot of accidents uh, affecting children. And we dove into that issue and we saw that the same road was used for the lorries of the, uh, of the project, but also for the community traffic uh, and the children going to school. And at that moment, we stopped the installments and the disbursements of the project. So we, 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 we uh, made it financially impossible to continue the project and we uh, pushed upon the company to take measures. Measures uh, which were, uh, were going to limit the time when they are moving the lorries uh, on that road. Uh, additional uh, alcohol uh, checks uh, and limiting uh, the speed. And from that moment on, uh, the access dropped dramatically. So we can really, by talking to our customers, we can exercise influence. But it's not that easy. Because sometimes we engage with clients. For instance, we had a client in the textile manufacturing in Thailand where there was child labor involved. And they stopped the child labor after uh, we were pushing that on the agenda. But two years later, we saw a dramatic increase in prostitution, child prostitution in the same area because of the fact that the kids who were not working in the factory anymore, they started to, to do something different because they needed the money. So only solving on one part of the, of, the, of the chain is often replacing it to another part. And so we need to think more about the ecosystem. So we need to understand, we need to engage, but important, most importantly, we need to collaborate. And that's why we, in the Netherlands, started an initiative which we call the Dutch Banking Sector on Human Rights. And we signed a contract in 2016 with 13 banks, with NGOs, with labor organizations, and with the Dutch government. With the goal to embed human rights in our policies, to do due diligence all in the same way, and to learn from each other how we do it, but also to make use of the knowledge that NGOs have about these companies, and to report on it in a certain way. And the fourth thing that we did is we decided to make some analysis on value chains to get a better understanding of what's going on in those value chains. Because then we're back to this spiral again, so the vicious circle, understanding, and that leads to better engagement, and then we can collaborate further. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to a conclusion. Your Majesty, you were very clear this morning. You said this morning, I want you to stop talking and I want you to get into action. You said it much more polite than I do, but you're a king and I'm a Dutchman, so that's a little bit uh, the difference, I think. So we need to come in, into action. And Your Royal Highness, Princess Laurentine, you told us where we can find the answers, because the answers are often with the children themselves. And we tend to talk a lot about children, and we're not so good in talking with children. 
even not today. And that's my wish for this forum, for the next forum. I would hope that we would have a panel here where also children are participating in the conversation and not via uh, all kinds of questions or separate uh, sessions, but really part of the panel. But until that time, you will have to do it with boring bankers and investors. So I think this is the time to call upon my colleagues to have the conversation with the panel. Thank you very much.